I'm really tired. My body hurts. So, about yesterday. We're here at beautiful TPC Las Vegas on the 18th hole. Kind of to my back here. Thought it was a great idea to come play 18 holes before I play poker for 24 hours straight. Hey, yes, can I get on the 1 3 element list, please? Benton, B E N T O N. Thank you. Bye-bye. What's going on everybody? Been a while. Benton Blakeman here for the Hand History Lounge. Kind of dark, sorry about that. It is almost seven o'clock on Saturday night, October 17th or so. Uh, we're gonna do something different. Gonna try to do a proper vlog and we are going to be playing 24 hours straight of poker. The goal is to start off at 1-3, $300 buy-in. We're gonna go up as high as we can. As soon as we get to 500, moving to 2-5. As soon as we get to 1,000, head it over to Aria for 2-5 at Aria. Um, soon as we get to 1500 back to Bellagio 510 1500 max just gonna try to run it up see how high we can get up in 24 hours see if we can make it to 1020 or so um, I've given myself five buy-ins of 300 um, so we've got 1500 to play with um, and we're just gonna try to follow the rules as soon as we have a full buy-in for the next stake up we go ahead and move up see where we finish I seem to not be able to look at the camera because uh, I'm not good at these vlog things but that's okay we'll give it a shot uh, we've got a lot of guys in from the Hand History Lounge. They're looking forward to this. I'm kind of looking forward to this. I'll put in a little clip of what I did earlier, which was not the smart idea. Oh, cool, look. Fountains. Bellagio Fountains. They're going off. Uh, they must be anticipating us. Anyway, let's head in the casino. Let's get started. We're on the list. We're ready to go. Ready to have some fun. Okay, first hours in the books, and we are dead even. Um, have two hands to go over, both of them pretty simple. First one, there's a $6 under the gun straddle. Folds me on the button, I make it 20 with ace four offsuit, and the straddle calls. And uh, the flop comes ace, 10, four, rainbow. Uh, straddler leads for 35 into 40. I call. Um, I definitely could raise here, but decided to just call here because of our effective stacks. Um, I only have a little bit over 200 left after, and I figure the money's going to get in either way. Uh, the turn is uh, offsuit six, and now he bets $50 into um, about 100. 
110. I decide to raise all in here for uh, about 175 more, and he decides to fold, which is unfortunate, but uh, you know it happens. Uh, the second hand, we raise ace, ace king offsuit uh, from the cutoff. The small blind defends. The flop comes ace nine six. He check calls. Um, Ten dollars. I made a twelve pre flop. He check check. He check calls ten. Uh, the turn. Eight nine six. Oh, the turn is a jack, putting two clubs. He check calls twenty five. Rivers an offsuit seven, and he leads fifty dollars. Um, I think in one three no limit we should just fold here because they just don't bluff enough, and they don't overvalue hands enough. They're just pretty passive. I decide to call, and he shows a set of nines. So we're even after the first hour of play and headed back in now. What's going on everybody? I'm here with Preston, Hand History Lounge member. What do you like the most about the Hand History Lounge? Uh, well, there's a good sense of community within the lounge uh, outside of even the feedback that's there. But the fact that during a session I can post multiple different spots uh, where I'm unsure about my actions and uh, whether uh, certain actions are profitable uh, I can get real-time feedback from multiple different perspectives uh, from players who are quite frankly more uh, skilled and have a lot more experience in the game. Uh, so that's been really helpful for myself. Um, you know, I, I've had river decisions at two, three hundred dollars where I'm making huge mistakes just from like feedback off of those hands and for the many hands that I'll play in the future. You could get feedback on one of those hands and pay off a whole year. Absolutely. Or, I mean, right. obviously per month as well. Uh, so just that kind of feedback. I mean, it, it pays for itself tenfold. And I think uh, every player that's within there has greatly improved. I mean, you just see through the course of their post how much better their decision making comes down the line. So it's definitely something that's uh, very, very worth the money. Awesome, man. Thanks yeah. for the time. We'll let yeah, you get back no to problem. the table. All right. All right, buddy. Okay, that took much longer than expected. We are at five and a half hour mark, and we finally got our $300 buy-in in the one three game up to $540. So now we're gonna move on over to the two five at Bellagio, which is a $500 max. I wish I had some more hands to go over during the one three portion, but it was extremely boring. Um, and the only reason I got there was just winning small pots, winning 15 or $20 at a time um, and mostly just making hands flopping top pair and just making a little bit money each time anyway uh, hopefully this 2-5 Bellagio session doesn't take nearly as long but we will see uh, feeling pretty good what's up everybody we just graduated from 1325 we're here with hand history lounge member Ben you would know Ben from the meetup games. He's the guy who's always dressed up so sharp. Yeah. <laughs> ben, how do you like the lounge? Love it. Absolutely love it. Worth the money? Worth twice the money. Worth twice, Literally. The, twice the money. It's a steal at least. twice the price. Yeah. At least twice the money. It's, it's a free flop raise and a seat bet. That's right. Free flop raise and a seat bet. Friction based poker coaching, and it's helped my game tremendously. Like, yeah. You know, just leaps and bounds. So, yeah. Absolutely worth the money. Okay, so one quick summary. What's your favorite thing about the hand history line? Um, I mean, the people, really. You know, I mean, you really think about the community. The community and the myriad of people that are in there. You know, there are players at all stake levels from 1 3 up to 10 20, 20 40. Yep. All walks of life playing over 30 years, new players just into the game. And it's just everyone, it's just the, it's everyone's pushes each other and wants to better themselves playing poker. So yeah, that's what I love about it. Okay, it is uh, 3.30 in the morning. We just hit the eight hour mark. Um, still playing 2-5, Bellagio, 500 max. Uh, we're currently about even. Just got table change into what seems to be a really great game. So hoping we have some cool hands. 
and hoping we can run it up and get to the 251K at Aria sooner than later. Sometimes I like to take a break and just decompress for a little bit and I'll burn a $20 bill in one of these fun slot machines. Hey, can I get on the uh, list for 25 No Limit, please? Jesus, it's bright out here. It's a little bit different than last night. Okay. 8.30 in the morning, so we've been at 13 hours, just over halfway. Um, just finished playing at Bellagio, 25500 buy-in. Now we're moving on up to Aria, 25 $1,000 buy-in. There's only one game, hopefully it keeps running. We're going to head straight over there. Just a couple hands to run through. Um, the 2-5 was also slow like the 1-3 was. I happened to make two hands and got paid on both of them. Uh, the first hand saw a raise from late position. I decided to call after another caller. I call from the small blind with ace nine suited. Um, I think it's perfectly fine to three bet as a squeeze there. Uh, I decide to call and we take a flop. Um, king nine four with the king four of diamonds. Uh, I go ahead and check the middle position limper who also called the raise checks, the razor checks, guy on the button checks. Uh, we see a turn card. Uh, deuce of diamonds so we make the nut flush i check now the limper bets 25 gets called by the razor and now the caller on the button makes it 125. um i wasn't sure what to do sizing wise i didn't want to lose them the hand's been played so weird uh, i decide i have to put in a raise here i want to take the lead i make it 285 which is a pretty small raise um, but the other guy was a pretty short stack uh, who bet the 25. He ends up calling uh, the 285. Um, and the guy who made it 125 folded. On the river, I'm not even sure what it was. I put the guy all in because he only had 60 bucks left and he called and we won that. So that, that put us up close to the, uh, the mark to head over to Aria. Uh, then we got dealt pocket jacks, under the gun raised. I call from under the gun one. The button calls. We go three ways uh, to a flop it was 15 15 15 so there's about 50 in the pot Here comes ace jack four the razor checks I decide just to go ahead and bet 40 because the guy behind me is pretty sticky and uh, <clears throat> if he has an ace he's just never folding so I use a bigger size exploitively there he ends up calling uh, the turn is a uh, king I bet 110 and he calls the river is a queen putting four to a straight. I just don't think he has many tens in his hand. I really put him on a hand like ace queen or ace king. Um, I decide to just block bet 160 on the river. He had about 400 left, so he's just never shoving lighter. And he's never shoving as a bluff, so I can actually fold two river shoves. He tanked a long time and ended up showing an ace uh, just for one pair uh, and ended up folding. But anyway... We got our buy-in above the watermark that we needed. Now we're up exactly $705, 200 from 1-3, uh, 500 from 2-5. So now we have our $1,000 buy-in, uh, along with our original 300 that we started with. Uh, so we're headed over to Aria to play some 2-5, 1K. Good luck us.
All right, we're here at the area. At the top of the 2.5 millimeter game, our goal is to make 500 bucks. $1,000 buy-in, we get up to 1,500, call it quits, and head back to Bellagio to get the 510 game. Let's hope it all works out. Right, just gonna do a quick update we're still over at aria we've just hit hour 16. Uh, it's like 11 30 in the morning started at 7 30 last night currently up 400 dollars here remember our goal is to get up 500 which will make us up 1200 for the day add in our three buy-in and we can go over to bellagio and play 510 with 1500. Um, so only two real hands of note uh, the first one we're playing six-handed and the under the gun player which would also be the low jack opens uh, our open limps. Uh, I raise to 25 with 6-7 of diamonds. He calls. The flop is 8-8-6. Eight, eight, uh, he checks. I bet 20. He calls. The turn comes a 9, which gives me an open-end straight draw, uh, but it also hits a lot of his hands like 10-9 and just random uh, straight draw type hands. Um, he leads out for 50. I think it's a little bit too weak to fold now. I go ahead and call 50. River comes a seven. Uh, so the board is eight, eight, six, nine, seven. And now he bets 60. And something about the way he bet, uh, I didn't think that he had a full, I'm almost positive he doesn't have a full house with that sizing. Um, he may have a bottom straight. I don't even think he has the top straight, but if he does, he's definitely gonna be worried about a full house. And we have a lot of the full house blockers. Um, so I went ahead and I raised to 230, I'm sorry, to 300, 330, Six th no, 230, sorry, uh, but 4X. So I made it 230, and he uh, tanked for a little while and ended up folding. So that put us up uh, 150 or so, kind of bled down, and then uh, it's a straddle pot, uh, cut off limps for 10. I decide just to limp because this cut off's defending everything. Um, so I'm going to want to isolate him with stronger hands than Jack High, but Jack 10 also plays okay on the button. So I go ahead and limp, uh, small blind comes along, option, uh, straddle checks his option, flop is Jack 10 8, so we flop top 2, checks to us, I bet 35 into 40 on this dynamic board, I'm not going to bet it too often, so when I do I want to use a larger sizing. Uh, I bet 35, small blind calls, uh, other players fold, turns a 10, so we turn to full house. And uh, he checks again, and there's also a flush draw out there. Um, I decide to bet small because if he has a 10, he's going to check raise. If he has a straight, he's going to check raise. If he has anything else, I don't want him folding. I want to string him along a little bit and allow him to put some more money in. So, anyway, I go ahead and bet 40 now, and he calls 40 right away. Uh, River's an offsuit four, he leads for 80, and he has uh, 200 more behind. I put him all in, and he ends up folding. Um, but, you know, we pick up some decent little chips there. Uh, and that's about it. So we're up 400. We're looking for another 100 bucks. Then we're headed back to Bellagio uh, to try to play some 510 with the last, I don't know how many more hours we have to go now, eight hours or so. Uh, that's it. Talk to you soon. Hi, Amy. Can I get on the 510 No Limit list, please? It's Benton, B-E-N-T-O-N. Th thanks, Amy. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, back in the car, headed back to Bellagio because we leveled up. Uh, you may or may not, depending on how I do this, you may or may not already know that. I'm a little bit delirious. It's uh, about... 18, 
18 hours now. So got about six hours left, maybe 18 and a half hours now. Um, so we bought in for the thousand in the two five at Aria and we cashed out for eighteen ninety five. Um, so actually won more than the five hundred. Uh, so now we have thirty one hundred off of the fifteen hundred we started with. So we're up six sixteen hundred and we're going to Bellagio play fifteen hundred dollar buy in five ten. So we're in a complete free roll. So let's just try to run it up during these last five hours or so. Um, the hand that got me over the top, I was I was stagnant, like winning two fifty, and you know we needed to get to fifteen hundred in our stack, so we needed we need to win another two fifty because we had twelve fifty. And uh, the guy to my right opens to fifteen. I decide just to call with uh, Ace Ten of Spades, and uh, a few more players call. It's pretty call happy table. Uh, I'm really looking to like flush over flush somebody because they're just gonna go crazy. Flop comes Ace Seven Deuce. None of my suit, but Rainbow. Guy to my right bets 40, I call everybody else folds. Turns a 10, uh, putting a diamond draw, or some suit that was not, yeah, a diamond draw. Uh, the guy bets 50 now, oh, 70 now, he bets 70. And I raised to 200, in retrospect, I should have made it larger because he's never folding ace king. I was just weighting him more towards ace queen and ace jack because when he had ace king, he would make it like 45 preflop. Um, Anyway, I made it 200. He called pretty quickly, so I know he's got a pretty big ace. Um, the river's a king. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it because I really think that uh, he has more ace queen and ace jack. Then when he checks the river to me, uh, I just think he's always going to lead when he makes aces and kings on the river. Uh, this particular player, not not every player. Um, anyway, I decide to uh, not go crazy, and I bet 260. And he called pretty quickly, and I showed him aces and tens, and it was good. And we racked up the chips. So I noticed we were winning almost 900, uh, which puts us over that mark. So let's head to Bellagio. I already called up, put my name on the list. Let's get it done. You know, this ended up way better than I thought. I really thought it was going to be a complete epic fail. No matter what happens, it's a win from here out. So I didn't play many pots in the 510 game. There was one that was pretty unique. Uh, there was a guy to my right who kept limping every hand. And he'd mostly just call raises. So this time he limps in and I made it 50 with ace king. Uh, the big blind Cole calls 50. And then this guy, like, back raises to 100. Which is weird because neither one of us ever folding. But I'm a little bit weary of a back raise from a guy who hasn't shown much aggression at all. So I, I decided just to call, big blind calls. Uh, we get an ace nine flop with two hearts. I think ace nine four. Checks to me, I decided to check, take a street out and uh, under rep my hand a little bit. And I kind of want to see what this guy to my right's doing. Uh, anyway, the turn is another heart, uh, the seven of hearts. Yeah, ace nine four seven. Um, Blind checks, now the guy bets 200, I call, now the guy folds. River's a blank, he bets 300, I call, and he had ace queen. So, we went a decent pot, but it's just a super weird play hand. But that was it, that was the only real 5-10 hand I played. I was stuck a little bit, just losing small pots. I won a few small pots to get back to even, then I won that hand, bled off a little more, and that's where we ended up. But, 
was a lot of fun. I wish it was some more interesting hands, but over 23 hours of play, I only flopped one set and I only made one straight. Um, I think I had aces and kings twice each. Same with queens, maybe two times each. So it's a relatively card dead, but overall, for good results. Yeah. What's up, everybody? It's my good friend Dan. You probably recognize him from Andrew's vlogs here or there. Hello, y'all. He kind of looks like Rick Harrison from Pawn Star. That's what they say. So Dan is the longest running member of the Hand History Lounge. How long have you been a member? Uh, over three years. Over three years. Yep. What were you playing before, and what are you playing now? So primarily, I was playing like one two at Planet Hollywood, which is uh, maybe I'll take this down a little bit. One two Planet Hollywood, two hundred dollar max buy in, and. Now I'm regularly playing 2-5 at Aria, which is 1,000 max, occasionally mixing in some 5-10 yeah. uh, at Bellagio, which is 1,500, and uh, I've played a bit of 5-10 at Aria, which is 3,000, or 3K max as well. What's your favorite thing about the Hemi Pure Lounge? If you had one, one thing to choose from that you love the most? I mean, besides the fact that I actually became a consistent winner, um, I mean, my favorite thing is you. Thank you. <laughs> because, you know, I get a lot out of the lounge, but I've gotten a lot out of the, um, you know, just the one-on-one -on -one lessons with you and yeah. texting your hands and those types of things. But it's a perk really, of the lounge, right? I, I mean, mean it, yeah, it's, but the community is great. You know, it's yeah. a, it's a, um, it's not a huge group of, you know, 10,000 people, but it's a, it's a small group that's all really invested in, in our own success, but everybody else's. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of like you're part of a team and you know you've got other people who are pulling for you and and in your corner and helping and and those things so the community aspect i think is really great um the the other thing is i mean there are a lot of other groups where you're getting input from everybody right and you sometimes you get different opinions and you don't know what to believe whereas this group is set up more so that you know everyone's funneling in questions but then they're being answered by you or by Andrew you know that the information is um, there's some backing behind it you know there's some science or art behind it or there's some success behind it as well so that's what I, I really like that as well cool well we're happy to have you in the lounge you can't get rid of me now so all right buddy <laughs> see y'all all right guys we're done uh, didn't quite make the 24 hours I quit right at the 23 hour mark. I could have easily played another hour. I just didn't see the reason to. Um, I ended up winning $405 in the 510 game, which puts us at just over $2,000 for the total 23 hour session. Uh, it was a hell of an experience. I loved it. Um, I couldn't have gone, gone to 1020 even if I would have won a little bit more. I was only about $500 away from being able to go to 1020 with 3,000 but there was no 20, 1020 game running it was only 2040 and uh, definitely was not getting to that level so anyway we'll just call it good 23 hours and uh, hey we, we were never in more than the $400 to start 300 and then $100 add-on I think it's pretty successful it was a lot of fun thanks for hanging out with me guys take care check out the hand history lounge So it's my first session back after the uh, experiment there. I'm excited to be back, just playing my normal limit, playing just 510 to limit tonight at Bellagio. Uh, a few takeaways is uh, I'm kind of getting old to do 24 hour sessions. I was pretty tired after, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, looking forward to regular poker tonight. Also, after going over a lot of the footage, um, it has become obvious to me I am not a vlogger like Andrew or Brad or any of those guys. 
So hopefully you take that into consideration when looking at this video. Uh, it definitely will not be the same quality. I do not even own a drone, much less know how to use one. Uh, but it was fun either way, and uh, I know I don't have all the fun graphics and everything, but I appreciate you guys coming on the ride with me. And thank you for uh, spending time with us, and check out Hand History Lounge. Let me know what you think. All right, all done with our session. I gotta say, 22, 23 hour session was fun, but something nice about being back in 510, playing a three hour session and picking up 3,600. No complaints here.